Hey everyone, uh, episode 15 of the LEGO Train Container Terminal was already in production when I surpassed the 100,000 subscribers on my main channel. Yes, finally! Um, I'm very happy about that. Um, I'm gonna make a dedicated video for that when I've received the silver play button. It can take up like three months uh, to arrive, I've read. So we have to have some patience for that. Anyway, I wanted to thank you, uh, work in progresses, since uh, most of you are probably also subscribed to my main channel. Um, let's now continue with uh, the work in progress series. Hey, welcome to another episode of the LEGO Train Container Terminal. In this episode, I'm gonna move to another Reno Mega, and after that, we're gonna see if we can make the offsetting of the crane work. The offsetting of the crane will be based on where the train has stopped. But first we're gonna move to an Arduino Mega. Until now I was using a normal Arduino because I have a shield that is controlling the EV3 motors that are moving the crane. Um, unfortunately I do not have enough I.O. pins so that means that I have to move to a bigger Arduino which is the Arduino Mega. But unfortunately the shield for the EV3 motors doesn't fit on the Arduino Mega. So that means that I have to rewire the whole thing manually. After some reading in the technical specifications of the shield it turns out that I only have to wire the bus system. Uh, which is an I2C bus system. Um, it kind of looks like the USB bus system, um, but it's much older. It's, uh, I believe, from the 80s, maybe late 70s, I don't know. It developed by Philips, I believe. And it was used in, for example, the uh, back in the day you had these, these huge stereo towers. And, you know, it was with a CD player and a, a tuner and a cassette deck and one. And the I2C -C bus was uh, used in those systems as well to have communication between the different modules. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. Hold on, let's test it. There you go. So now I can continue with um, incorporating the other stuff of the proof of concept onto this Arduino platform and then we can make the crane move. I'm forgetting something. I built a sort of temporary power supply for uh, this shield and that's because this shield is uh, rated for a maximum of 10 and a half volts. It has to do with the motor driver chips inside. I'm always using 12 volts, that's a power supply that, that comes out of the lab power supply or um, if I need higher power I use an ATX power supply. Anyway, I need to go from 12 volts to a maximum of 10.5. I decided to go for 9 volts which uh, also uh, is above the minimum of 7 volts for the shield. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to use this uh, little thing here. It's... Uh, no, this is the wrong one. <laughs> This one here, this is a um, voltage regulator I just put in 12 volts and 9 volts will uh, come out and the difference it will dissipate as heat. And from the 9 volts I can actually also make 5 volts with another one which is rated for 5 volts. Um, it's a pretty simple method to uh, build a small power supply with, uh, with the voltage that you need. Um, this is what I'm going to do now, so I'm going to extend this bit a bit. And we're gonna place a small circuit board. I don't know, I got this one, but I think it's pretty small. Because I wanna add some headers so I can easily hook up extra equipment that needs uh, power from the 9 volt or 5 volt reel. Or the 12 volt power supply will have a reel as well. So I'm gonna do that first. So now this one is done. We can actually move most of the stuff laying around here except for the compressor. And then we're going to install the rig that is over there in here and we can connect the, connect the crane and then we can have a look at how to position the uh, reed switches on the crane. So that's what we're going to do now. So 
so it's uh, wired up to the power. I'm gonna enable the power and see if uh, if I've done my job correctly or not. Yeah, that looks promising. I see some LEDs on the Arduino, so uh, everything's powered up now. And we can start uh, connecting the read switches. So I connected the whole thing and now we're gonna test the um, read switches. As I said, there are two LEDs over here that will light lit up when the uh, read switch is activated. And that way I know that the signal is getting into the uh, microcontroller. Um, the actual, actually, the connection to the microcontroller is it made yet because I need to uh, figure out which uh, which pins I'm going to use as you can see the Arduino Mega has like a lot of pin connections so that won't be a problem so let's move the train over the uh, read switch which is still in the track on the same place to make the train stop and as you can see that works just fine now I'm going to move to the other side of the track, over there, because there's the uh, other read switch, which will be connected to the uh, crane, and I'm going to test that one as well. Since the first one worked, I assume that the second one will work as well. Alright, that looks promising. Next step is connecting the read switch to the uh, crane. So what you see here is already put in magnet on the uh, wagon and I'm gonna put a reed switch which is already wired on the blue bracket of the crane here and um, I'm, I'm gonna make sure that the distance is correct, this needs some fine tuning. Furthermore I'm gonna add some uh, rails to the reach of the crane, 16 studs in total. So uh, let's, let's get started on that. So one of the reasons I put an LED on the circuit board is that I actually can read them out very easily. Um, for now, for example, I need to adjust the distance between the sensor and the magnet on the wagon to make sure it works properly. And by moving the wagon past the read sensor, I can actually see the LED lighting up instead of having to write a program and having to look at the screen to see whether the output is 1 or 0. I can now just look at it, see that it works, and I'm fine. There's just one little pro problem that I didn't think of for now, and that is the following. Is that we got the wire of the sensor over here, and since the crane is moving that direction and back again, this wire is gonna get stuck on the rails for sure. So I need to uh, lead it back to the back of the crane where also the other wires come out and then uh, there won't be an issue. You might wondering what I'm doing right now. I'm making a twisted pair cable. When they're of a certain length it's easier to do it like this with a simple Lego motor setup instead of making them manually. So I'm done building the uh, control center and uh, I've attached the uh, reed switches. One is here in the track below the wagon and the other one is here on the crane. And what you see here is I've made a bit of a uh, offset on the uh, reed switch. I will be making this look more nicely than it is right now. Uh, this is uh, again a proof of concept. And I've made the uh, reed switch stick out a bit that when the wagon arrives, or actually when the crane arrives at the wagon, and it stops at a certain position when it senses the magnet here on the wagon, it is centered. The first container is centered in the middle of the crane. And that's a good starting point to calculate also the offset. So there's one concession that I had to make and that is ignoring this locomotive over here. And this is why. Um, as you know, this locomotive contains a motor that is on steroids. It runs very fast. And these motors from the Mars train and also the red one that you've seen in a previous video, they run a bit slower because they are more worn out. And actually I thought that the Slower motors were actually the exception, but it turns out, after testing uh, several motors, 
that the motor under the white locomotive is actually a problem in the exception. So if I want to make this locomotive with this motor stop at the right position, I not only have to extend the reach of the crane, 16 studs on that side, what I already did, but I need another additional 16 studs on this side as well. And I don't want to do that because, as I explained in a previous episode, uh, the more reach I get for the crane, the more mechanical play can uh, be a part of it, and the more uh, offset I get. And I try to reduce that as much as possible. So I decided to ignore this white locomotive. It's nice that the motor runs so well, but um, it's an exception. And I first was like, I need to try every motor available, but this is an exception. So I'm gonna fit a normal, regular motor under the locomotives that I'm gonna use for uh, the container trains. And um, then I will be fine with this setup. All right, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna test first the Mars train, see where it stops. Then the crane will uh, actually move a bit to the left and uh, we'll see where it stops and it should be exactly in the middle of the first wagon. So it's ready for example to pick up the first container without any movement to the left or to the right. If it passes that test we're going to do the same thing with the red locomotive and um, the red locomotive is a bit weaker so it'll stop on a different position and then the same thing the crane needs to stop exactly again in the middle of the first wagon and if that works out i'm happy and we can continue with uh, with the next phase but let's let's first see if it all works well, let's see what happens all right everything worked now we're going to see if the container is actually dead centered in the middle of the crane. Yeah, I believe so. There is a bit of a difference. It may be one st stud or something like that. Maybe it needs a bit of uh, fine tuning, but uh, I'm very happy with this result. So let's try the other uh, locomotive. The train is powered up. Stopped. Oh, look at that. <laughs> it actually came further than the Mask locomotive. That's pretty uh, strange. I would have guessed that it would be the other way around. But it doesn't matter. Also, in this case, the container is completely centered in the middle of the crane. And this is actually what we want. So maybe it's uh, a bit uh, like a stud to the right or something maybe that needs uh, a bit of fine tuning but i think i can uh, i can make this work but we, we can uh, try that so it's a bit too far to the right that means that i need to let me just move the crane a bit that means that i need to place this one one stud to the left and let's see what uh, what happens now It's definitely too far to the uh, left still. Is this better? I don't know. I don't see any difference. So I think we actually got it working pretty well. The one stat uh, difference that uh, may occur that you've seen could be a problem. It also could not be a problem. Um, it depends on how the system copes with it. And that's what we're going to find out in the next episode where we're actually going to move containers from the monorail cart to the train wagons and back again. And um, using the system that you've just seen, so the train is stopping, the crane is moving, then containers will be moved by the crane. And when that goes all well, um, it means that the, the small offset of one stop isn't a problem. If that doesn't go well, then we need to figure out to make it more precise. And I think we can do that by actually moving the uh, magnet closer to the container or moving it further away. Um, it depends a bit on, on how the magnetic field spreads from the magnet. And uh, that, that needs some testing, but I think we can uh, make 
yeah, I think we can make it work. So this is going to be on the next episode, but there's one little hurdle first. And that is that I'm using custom length NXT cables for the uh, EV3 motors. And uh, as you know, they have uh, NXT motors have a special connector and I can't make the cables myself. So I ordered them at uh, mindsensors.com, no product placement by the way. Where I also bought the Arduino shields that con control the uh, NXT or EV3 motors. But the problem is the cable for the arm that is moving along the crane is too short. It's 150 centimeters and I need at least two meters. So that's a problem. So I looked at the website of uh, mindsensors.com and you can actually get custom length NXT cables over there. So I was looking for that and I was like, okay, I'm gonna order some of these uh, extra long cables. And then it turned out that they have uh, $40 shipping costs to the Netherlands. They're based in the US. And yeah, that's just too much. You know, it's it's like uh, 40 bucks for only shipping. It's, it's 80 to 100,000 views on my main channel to earn that back. It's, 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 so it's a lot. And if I spend 40 bucks on Legos or on uh, electronics or something like that, I, it doesn't matter, but it's shipping. You know, I don't get anything in return. And if I'm unlucky, also the customs will pick out my package and they'll put a, another, I know, 20% taxes on importing the package from the US. So it's a bit costly. So I Googled for it, but I couldn't find uh, places in Europe where they actually sell custom length. NXT cables, I can't make them myself because of the special plug. So um, if you know a place in Europe where they actually sell custom length NXT cables, please let me know. And because um, maybe I can order them there. And if not, then I'll just have to order them in, uh, in uh, the US and well, so be it. Um, I only got four cables, so I can extend them now, but in the end I, I need like 10 cables because, because uh, there will be probably two of those cranes and one third crane, which has also a few motors in it. So in the end I need them, whether it's from the Europe or from the US, but preferably from Europe, of course. All right, so that's gonna, that's what we're gonna do in the next episode. I'm gonna extend the cable for now, it's no problem, but I need a solution, a solid solution. For the cables in the future and we're going to move some containers next next episode um thank you for watching have a look at my instagram account the link is in the description i place uh images of this project so now and then i try to do it a few times a week and uh, have also a look at my uh, main channel if you haven't done so and i hope to see you next time and oh yeah i always forget like and subscribe <laughs> and i'll see you next time bye